Okay, let's talk about finished production of diplodenia. So you have your high quality rooted liners, you're ready to transplant, maybe you're gonna grow some quartz, maybe you're gonna grow some hanging baskets. Those seem to be very popular container sizes. For a one quart pot, we'd recommend one liner per pot. For a 10 inch to 12 inch basket, growers are typically putting in between four to six liners per basket. Production time ranges, but overall you should plan anywhere between 14 to 16 weeks after transplant if you're doing a traditional program by receiving liners in late winter, early spring. So one of the key components of production of diplodenia are those environmental parameters in your greenhouse. And so if those conditions are not right, what you may see is more vining and more vegetative growth. Those three parameters are light, temperature, and photo period. So typically your photo period or your duration should be greater than or equal to 14 hours of light. Your average daily temperature should range between 70 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. If you can get it warmer, all the better. And then also your light levels, your moles per day should be greater than or equal to 15 moles. And what that does, that interaction of those parameters can improve the flowering performance and reduce the time it takes to finish your diplodenia. So again, if these are not met, you're gonna get a little greater vining, you're gonna get more of a vegetative plant, and you're gonna miss your selling window for diplodenia. A lot of growers are leaning more to a pre-finished plant that may come out of Florida, and so it already has a lot of those parameters built into it. Warm temperature, higher light, and so finishing that plant off is not so challenging in those northern greenhouses. Fertility-wise, using nitrogen at rates of, say, 100 to 125 parts per million in the beginning, and then as the plant begins to build up, you can increase that, say, to 175 to 200 parts per million during the finishing phases. The goal, for the most part, is to achieve three to four flowers, flower buds for the retail specification, and ensuring that you're having nice proportionate size to the container. So using some of those plant growth regulators again, such as B9, so B9 between 2,500 to 5,000 parts per million foliar sprays are effective on tone and preventing internode stretch. And then also you can use bonsai drenches at the tail end of the crop in order to maintain proportionate size to the container. So those bonsai drenches range between say one to two parts per million and you may need to do some repeat applications uh, to, to hold the plant down. When you, um, when you market these plants, there's a lot of color coming on the side breaks. You may also see some more color here on the top shoots. But overall, focusing in on those environmental parameters, ensuring you've got good nutrition, and also using your plant growth regulators to control growth are so effective in producing diplodenia.